Racine is a community that is known for making things with its hands. And there's, there's an aspect of contemporary crafts that is very, very devoted to and involves the use of the hand in creation. In the mid-1990s, we created the third most significant contemporary craft collection to be found in any North American art museum. And at that point, we could only show 5% of it at any one time on a rotating basis over the course of a year. And people in the community realized that there was potential synergy here for us to create an attraction. And then Sam Johnson, who was a great supporter of the museum, obtained the two buildings that we're in right now in the downtown area, and we just celebrated our seventh anniversary. Attendance at both campuses has been averaging between 45 and 50,000 people a year, which I think is a great accomplishment in a community of 80,000. Almost half of those people we're finding from our visitor surveys come from outside Racine County. Our free first Fridays between April and December, in the evenings the galleries and the stores stay open and there's hundreds. In the summer months, there's thousands of people out on the sidewalk enjoying themselves. There's this whole new vibe. It's just created a whole different atmosphere to the city. I think the city is reimagining itself. With Ram's success helping to revitalize downtown Racine, Wustam House is able to dedicate itself full-time to the museum's mission of arts education. In this exhibit, the Racine Unified Student Arts Show, each art teacher in the district, and I think there are about 50 plus art teachers, are allowed to pick eight art pieces and they see thousands throughout the year. So it's a real special honor to be chosen each year to be represented in this exhibit. To have the opportunity to bring students of all age groups and all backgrounds into the museum is very important. Some people may never step foot in the museum unless they come through one of our outreach programs. We have a really quality program with quality art instructors and staff and people that really care about art and teaching arts to the community. It's just a really wonderful, joyous thing to see people create and be proud of what they do. Local and regional artists have always been part of our exhibition program and we do have a lot of nationally and internationally recognized artists living in Wisconsin. I came to Racine in 1976 to work for Western Publishing to draw Barney and Winnie the Pooh. Um, I've always tried to do fine art, uh, whether this is considered fine art or not, it is to me. I have three pieces in a permanent collection and um, it's one of the accomplishments of my life. Well right now we have donors living in 30 different states who have made and continue to make gifts of artworks to our permanent collection. That is how we've created it. We are so blessed to have Karen Johnson Boyd, for instance, who is a, an internationally renowned art collector right here in our community. And she has donated and continues to donate wonderful pieces of art to our museum. We have uh, co-curated exhibits with other museums, not only in the United States, but in Canada, in Israel. And I see that only as a growing potential because our collection grows and our reputation grows by the day. With new exhibits and ever-rotating pieces from the collection, there's always something new to see. The shows that we have up for summer of 2010 are organized around three solo shows for three artists, each of whom use bug imagery in their work, insects, as their subject matter. Well, we'll start with Catherine Chalmers, our photographer. She's worked for the past 10 years using the American cockroach as the subject matter for three bodies of photographs and three formal video pieces. We're also showing an installation by Jennifer Angus, who's a Wisconsin artist who lives in the Madison area. Angus is on the faculty at UW-Madison, and she's known across the country for creating installations on the walls that reference Victorian domestic architecture and interior decoration only the fleur-de-lis patterns you see are not created out of flocked wallpaper, they're created out of bugs. The third featured artist is Joanna Paleman, who's a lifelong resident of Milwaukee and someone with whom we've had a long-term working relationship. Joanna works in creating drawings, handmade books, and prints that are uh, devoted to nature as subject matter, and we've asked her to bring work from the last 30, 35 years up to the present that depicts insects as subject matter, and we have work in all of those media representing those years of her career.
gifts. So we're, we're very excited about how this has all turned out. And I like the idea of bringing the public in and showing them something they think is going to be a certain way but have it be very different than their expectations in hopes that it will turn people out into the street much more creative than they were when they walked in the door because we need creative solutions to our problems today and I have a very practical goal in wanting to make the public more creative.